Hi everyone, my name is Al, and I'm excited to share my first YouTube video with you. This video will focus on general tips and tricks for Disney Dreamlight Valley. This is for when you're just getting started, just some basic things to know. The first thing I want to talk about is hoarding everything. In the beginning, foraging is your best friend. It's pretty much the only thing that you can do until you find all the different tools. But keep everything. Friendship quests and advancing the storyline require a lot of grinding and a lot of materials. You can soften the grind by hoarding. So collecting softwood first to craft chests for organization, as you can see here, is going to be very helpful. I organize my chests by memory. <laughs> um, I put chests that hold similar items next to each other. I've seen content creators such as Maple's Melodies and Mirani on Twitter label their chests by placing tables behind the chest and then dropping the items that like correspond to each chest. I like to place my chest outside in my crafting area so that I don't have to enter my house, but it's really preference. Just choose the method that works best for you. Now let's Morning. talk about character skills. We need to spread these out. Once you level Hi. up a character friendship to level two, you hey. are able to take them on adventures with you. I really appreciate it. Character skills are super important because you are able to net way more items than just adventuring alone. So for example, I chose Kristoff to help me with mining. When I take him with me to specifically mine, he will find more ore than I would be able to find alone. You can see here that he's going to collect some for me. Um, but you also want to spread out your character skills. Make sure to have a couple of residents with mining and harvesting crop, if that's your playstyle like mine. Um, those are the ones I utilize the most, and it will net you more profit. With harvesting, that's how I get most of my money. So I always have like at least like three characters that have that skill just so I don't have to find the one person or maybe they're sleeping, for example, which if you're not time traveling, that can be a little bit annoying. So now let's talk about the Forgotten Lands. If I could go back in time, this would be the first area I unlock because pumpkins. Pumpkins are the most lucrative crop in the game at this time. I plant at minimum 200 seeds and I'm easily netting 500k per harvest. I'm spending probably around, I think, 27k per 100 I buy, but I'm still making more money than I'm putting into it. And this is without cooking. I don't like cooking. <laughs> Uh, it makes it easy for me to buy anything I like in Scrooge's shop when I prioritize harvesting my pumpkins. Um, so I, if I were you, I would prioritize unlocking this area if you can. If you don't yet have access to the Forgotten Lands, carrots can be a good starter crop early game as well as fishing, especially if you have Moana. You can upgrade her fishing boat and consistently have her fish for you and um, you can sell all the fish that she gets for you. Some of my friends unlocked Remy first so that you can make a quick buck by cooking souffles in mass quantity and then selling them. This method to me was a bit tedious so it didn't last long for me and instead I focused on harvesting. You see here, I, uh, if I were to plant a pumpkin in the meadow versus planting a pumpkin in the forgotten lands, there is no arrow. You wanna go for the arrow because it appears that there are certain areas that are best for each crop. So look for that arrow. Now you can see here that when I go to plant pumpkins in the Forgotten Lands, I get an arrow. I plant my canola in the Forest of Valor as well. Like I said before, it appears that the health, growth rate, and the amount harvested go up depending on the area planted. So you can tell which area is the best for each crop by looking for the arrow that appears next to the seed before you plant. If you are early game and the Forest of Valor drew you in like it did with me, you can plant 200 canola, you'll harvest them, and then you'll sell to Goofy's shop for around 50K. Keep in mind, I am spending around 5K buying the seeds and then I'm netting around 50K when I sell them. 
So since they only take 25 minutes to grow, this is a good money-making practice, doing this multiple times in your day, depending on your play style. You do have to water them a bit, but you can always check your map to see if they need water. Red icons will appear where you planted them, indicating that they need water. And I found this method pretty easy as I could forage um, or mine different areas while waiting. <laughs> Now let's talk about Scrooge's shop. Check his shop daily. Every day means new items, whether that be furniture, wallpaper, flooring, etc. Don't miss out on items that you have to have. Um, I've been looking for more wallpapers and flooring. I really want to start on my house, but um, we, we found a couple, but make sure you're checking it daily. Now let's talk about friendship leveling. Choose what you want to do and find a friend to adventure with you that has that skill. Wally helps me harvest, Kristoff helps me mine. You can check their skill under the main menu by toggling over to collection and then go to their character. Not only does this raise their friendship level very fast, but it also nets you more items. So it's a win-win situation. You can also raise friendship level by completing their quests and gifting them their daily gifts, which is also shown under the collection menu. These will change every day. Flowers are also um, a very good gift to give if you're not able to cook certain meals that they prefer that day. So also keep that in mind if you're trying to just get them up a level. Let me know in the comments if you found this video useful. I have attached my social media handles where I post the areas that I have finished if you'd like to follow on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find my preset bundle via Twitter or Instagram. It's the link in my bio and all you need to do is go to my Ko-Fi. This is if you're interested in posting your Dreamlight photos with an enhanced filter. If you have any other ideas for tutorials, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please like and subscribe to support my channel. I appreciate it. I hope everyone has a lovely day and thanks for watching.